There is a thread that runs through all life, from sea nets and sea lions to the ferns and mosses of the forest floor. A thread that runs through every human being alive and who has ever lived. A thread that is passed from parents to their children. That thread, the one that gives life its continuity and passes the blueprints of life from one generation to the next, is deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. The name deoxyribonucleic acid sounds complex and intimidating. Diagrams and illustrations of the molecule, likewise, suggest a molecule whose composition and structure can only be fathomed by PhDs in biochemistry. But, like so much in the physical world, DNA's effectiveness in carrying out its role in nature is due to its simplicity, not to any incredible complexity. The two strands that spiral around one another in a double helix to form the thread of life are made up of only four different subunits called nucleotides. The order of the four bases of these nucleotides, thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine on DNA's spiral staircase communicate instructions to a cell or organism in a unique code biologists call the genetic code. Before we look at the structure and chemical behavior of DNA further, let's consider the four functions that it has to perform as the genetic material contained in all life forms on Earth. One of the functions DNA has to perform is replicating itself. There is a lot of replicating and reproduction going on in the living world. Plants and animals creating offspring, their cells dividing, and unicellular protists and bacteria dividing too. Each and every cell in every organism has to have a copy or copies of the DNA unique to its particular species. While it's important for DNA to replicate accurately so that when cells divide, each receives exactly the same genetic information as the other, it is just as important, in terms of creating the Earth's incredible living diversity, that an error or mutation occur occasionally, and that these mutations can be transmitted to future generations, which is just what happens when a mutation occurs in the DNA of a sex cell. The diversity of life here on Earth is largely a result of mutations that have occurred in strands of DNA over the last three billion years. Another requirement of DNA as a genetic material is that it be able to store the information that determines the characteristics of organisms and the cells of which they are made up. On the surface, this sounds like an easy and obvious goal, but there are animals, like certain species of turtles, that can live hundreds of years, and plants like redwoods that can live thousands. That is a long time to store information in a potentially volatile chemical environment. If the cells in an organism started losing parts of their biochemical memories on a mass scale and forgetting which critical cellular functions to carry out, it wouldn't be long until the organism died as a result of this cellular memory loss. Finally, DNA or any other potential genetic material has to be able to use the information it stores to direct the synthesis of the structural proteins and enzymes necessary for the operation of the organism and its cells. Structural proteins define and maintain the shape of a cell or organism, while enzymes are large proteins that are critical to carrying out all the various chemical reactions essential to life. The elegant simplicity of DNA is at the heart of its performance of its varied tasks as the molecule of heredity. Each sequence of bases spells out, in a sort of biological Morse code, a unique set of genetic instructions. In a length of DNA only 10 nucleotide pairs long, the four bases can exist in over a million different combinations. As the average chromosome of higher organisms is billions of nucleotides or base pairs long, we can see that the information storage potential of a strand of DNA is tremendous. But the huge number of base pairs in the DNA of any given chromosome would also appear to make the potential for replication errors tremendously high. 